For LatinPost.com, I'm Michael Oleaga. Taina Caragol is the curator of Latino arts and history at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery, and she has been shining a spotlight on the contributions of U.S. Latinos. I sat down with Caragol to talk about her work and art within the Latino community. For those who are unfamiliar with the Smithsonian's uh, National Portrait Gallery, tell us what do you do here and what's fascinating about your, your time here? So the Portrait Gallery is a museum where history, biography, and portraiture intersect. It's a museum of national American history that tells the story of the United States through portraits of people who have made contributions um, of national impact, people who have shaped the history of the U.S. And um, here I work as a curator of Latino art and history. I've been here for two and a half years now. And uh, my role is to shine the spotlight on the contributions of U.S. Latinos to American history. And also to look at the links and historical interactions between Latin America and the U.S. through the 19th and 20th century until the present. What, what are some current exhibits currently available here that any Latino, any American, anyone worldwide can come and see? We have our temporary exhibitions. Right now uh, I curated an exhibition that is up that is called One Life Dolores Huerta on, uh, that commemorates the 50th anniversary of the Delano Grape Strike which launched the farm workers movement uh, 50 years ago yesterday actually and um, that examines the role of Dolores Huerta in the farm workers movement as the co-architect of the movement with Cesar Chavez. Uh, another exhibition that is up on view is IPOP, which uh, IPOP the Celebrity Gaze is a full title, which um, examines the role of portraiture in uh, contemporary society and um, in the imaging, if you will, of um, personalities that are very much in the public light in different fields, you know, from popular music, such as Katy Perry, to um, science, you know, uh, uh, actors, so mm -hmm. a whole variety. Sure, so in, with your role here, what do you think are one of the positives here that you're proud to say, yes, I'm able to accomplish this? Well, uh, since I arrived here, I've been collecting um, many portraits of, of Latinos and building up really our collection pretty much from scratch of uh, portraits of important Latino historical figures and also artists, Latino artists who work on portraiture. And right now, for example, at IPOP, there is there are maybe seven of those portraits that have been acquired recently, you know, from a portrait of um, the prominent writer Sandra Cisneros, uh, by Al Rendon, an artist from San Antonio, mm. to Portrait of Mark Anthony by um, Puerto Rican photographer Adal. Um, the, there are three photographs on view of uh, the Latino list by Timothy Greenfield Sanders. They are um, one of Justice Sonia Sotomayor, um, one of uh, Eva Longoria, and another one of John Leguizamo. So we have uh, many very interesting artworks up on view. And of course, you know, the show on the Huerta itself is the first one in the One Life series that we dedicate to a Latino figure. So it's incredibly exciting. You know, it's very exciting uh, that she is alive and she's still able to tell her story and uh, we are able to recognize her while she is here with us. Now, what are some of the challenges? I don't, I don't think a lot of people know or understand that it takes a lot of time to prepare an exhibit, to gather uh, all of the items necessary. Mm -hmm. So tell us uh, yeah, how much work is needed to set up, let's say, Dolores Huerta's exhibit. Well, uh, museums of um, the size and standing of, of, of this one, for example, you know, as a Smithsonian Museum, we prepare shows uh, three and four years in advance. This one life exhibition was put together in uh, a little bit over a year and a half, mm -hmm. which is not a lot of time actually, um, just because, you know, it kind of came to be after I was hired and through my expertise as a, um, an art historian focusing on Latino art and history. 
and uh, it is yeah it's quite another taking I mean you have to of course conduct a lot of research you know visit archives visit art collections and see what what are the materials that are out there that allow you to tell a story um, in this case the story of the of Dolores Huerta and of the farm workers movement and that does require research you know it requires uh, primary research in archives and it requires secondary research through you know just reading up on on the period on personalities and um, and it requires sometimes interviewing people so it's quite um, an undertaking in terms of uh, scholarship right well Hispanic Heritage Month is is as important as um, all the other team important markers of uh, specific cultures throughout the year, you know, from talking very sincerely, you know, I always, I mean, th th this is an important month for us, and Hispanic Heritage Month serves the purpose of um, creating awareness, really, of the, of the contributions of Latinos around the country. However, it's not the only time when we're active, you know, we're active all through the year doing important stuff, and it's not the only time when we want to have Latinos come into the museum. You know, this needs to be an everyday task for us, and it's an everyday goal as well, you know, to have uh, Latinos engage more seriously, you know, and more actively with the museum, to have them better represented in our collections as historical figures and also as artists. But we do have a very active uh, calendar for the month. Uh, we started um, today with a face-to-face -face discussion on Luis Muñoz Marin um, uh, and uh, in particular you know centered around a painting we have brought on loan from the Fundación Luis Muñoz Marin in Puerto Rico and um, the painting is by Francisco Rodón it's one of the most significant artworks of Puerto Rican art history in the 20th century and we're going to have it here for the next two years and uh, it's absolute, absolutely a fabulous occasion that allows us to talk about Puerto Rican history, also about American history outside the continental geographic boundaries. And um, it also allows us to place, uh, to, to give some context to uh, new portraits we have acquired of uh, people of the Puerto Rican diaspora. Um, so we started that, uh, we started our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, if you will, today with that discussion. We also have, uh, in a month, another face-to-face -face, um, um, talk on Pablo Casals, who was a, a, a Spanish exile. Of, uh, his mother was Puerto Rican and he lived the last 16 years of his, of his life in Puerto Rico and was quite important in um, establishing cultural infrastructure there of the government of Luis Muñoz Marin. And um, we have a, a Living Self-Portrait, which is a signature program of the Portrait Gallery. Um, it's a, it's a, an interview with an important living historical subject, and in this case, it's Dolores Huerta, and that will be next Thursday, September 24th. I will be interviewing her. Um, and she will be talking about her experiences in the farm workers movement and uh, her experiences in general in, uh, you know, in the fight for human rights and um, it will be a wonderful, wonderful talk. And we also have a family day coming up on October the 4th. I think art is essential in any community. Uh, in the Latino community, it has been uh, traditionally in the in the U.S. in the U.S. Latino community, art has been traditionally very important um, in creating a sense of, of community, of togetherness, of cultural identity, and uh, there are many important um, artists that have contributed to that effort. You know, at a grassroots level and others that have um, come out of those communities but perhaps um, not necessarily worked in grassroots art movements you know but that are nonetheless part of you know the product of the experience of, of, of the Latino experience in the United States 
So I'm um, thinking, for example, of artists such as Rafael Montañez Ortiz, who is half Chicano, half Puerto Rican, um, and um, has a, a lot of important conceptual artwork. Uh, I'm also thinking in terms of grassroots um, art. I'm thinking of the New York and Chicano movements of the 60s and 70s. And um, I think it is important to acknowledge that history. Uh, that is very much one of my goals here as a curator of Latino art and history, to acknowledge those artists, to acknowledge that history, and to also um, reflect on what's happening today. How has that, um, how have those art expressions changed or evolved? Um, how are they taking place right now? Uh, I think if we succeed at that task of representing that, um, we will do, will be a wonderful thing for, uh, for Latinos and also for Americans in general, to be able to come here and to, uh, to see those artworks and to see that part of the history which has not been until the present uh, that visible. Mm -hmm.